To, we wanted to start off with giving you an idea of what um, patients typically might be listening to pretty much on a 24-hour basis in an ICU. And it was interesting for me to watch your reaction to, to this. Um, I didn't see anybody look like they were having a particularly good time and thought it was pleasant. It is pretty annoying, right? Okay. So we're going to be talking about environmental music therapy and how, what it is and how we use environmental music therapy in this, in this particular context. And specifically, um, a working hypothesis that we have about using environmental music therapy with pain. So starting off um, on a definition, it's the intentional use of music and sound to incorporate ambient sound, ambient noise on the units and try and make them into a soundscape or a soundtrack of what's going on. So the idea is to take existing sound, combine it with musical elements, and modulate people's perception of what, what the ambient sounds are. As you experience, they're, they're pretty intrusive. They're pretty intrusive. So the idea is to take these sounds, use musical elements, and try and make it into something, into something else in such a way that we're, we're looking to alter patients and staff's perception of the acoustic environment and perhaps the environment of the hospital itself so that it seems to be not um, quite as hostile a place as most patients think it is. So these are just some ideas on, on EMT. It's a whole constructive physical, cultural, and social elements. And we use music to incorporate these elements and merge them into other emotional or aesthetic elements. An emotional or aesthetic experience different from the usual hospital experience. So we're going to put this recording that we have back on. And uh, we're going to use improvised music. Uh, the music we use can be improvisational in nature, um, it could be pre-composed music, but if we're working with, with an idea that, that uh, uh, I find very exciting and, and also very challenging, is this, this concept of creating a soundtrack of what's going on. And for that we take mostly, for, for the most part, we improvise.
Maybe it looks like that. Since this is not a live noise, we can add more ladies noise. It's like a kid trying to play the orchestra. Mm -hmm. We can change the, the music. But you can get a picture of, the, of this intervention, mm -hmm. this is specific. Um, how we have to deal with this ambient, and how sometimes we have to give up and stop. Because we really believe that adding more noise, adding music, or the sound to a uh, big noise is sometimes going to be good to make a big mess. Now we have to stop and take some distance, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. Now we have to renegotiate with the dynamics of the room. Okay, so the idea is that we're, we're not trying to mask noise. Masking is covering it up. And uh, that, that's something that's actually illegal to do with a monitor alarm that's trying to mask that noise. So the idea is that instead of trying to mask it, we're trying to incorporate it into something. And um, I'm curious to know what, I mean, I have an, an, an idea of how your perception of that particular experience might have been while we were playing it. And it seemed to me that it was quite different than the first time you were listening to it. Um, I'm interested to hear any comments you might have. Was it easier to focus on something else that wasn't just the you know, sounds? Did it modulate the experience for you? Was it the same sort of experience? Sure. I think what, what struck me is, you know, certainly you're using the sound of the um, that prominent beeping as a tonal center for the music. Mm -hmm. And um, that even when music is being created, sometimes um, sort of remaining resolve too long a time on the tonic, for me, has almost a little bit of a tension in itself. It sometimes almost can, maybe in a sense, amplify in that effect one of the things maybe that speaks to what you just mentioned. And, and then sort of diatonically as you could, you'd sort of move away and go up and then you come back down, it really creates, a, it invites my ear and it creates a kind of, um, um, there's a sense of a purposeful movement away from the previously established collection of ambient sounds. Mm -hmm. So it's almost sort of like, it's not just that the music is kind of engaging with it the whole time, it's sort of moving, to the music is also in a sense moving towards in a way, and it's pulling my ear towards in a way, in a focus, focusing sense, that's my subjective. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you. That's great. Well, but it does bring up a point. Um, of course, since you know it's it's uh, an improvisational process that is uh, sometimes more successful than than other times. But uh, once again, the the idea is to try to try and create something. Uh, use metaphors in, in the music. There was a bit of a piece that, that came out that we played around with a little bit too. Um, but the idea of leaving some space is not just to try and bombard somebody's senses with music either, but to leave, leave space for life to continue on the ice. Yeah, About the first half, it was almost a little too much for me. Like when somebody is talking and they're playing and I think, why don't they just talk? Mm -hmm. But by the second half, I was completely involved in what you were doing. And I would have to hear it at least one more time, and obviously I can't because it was improvised, to know if, if your music changed that much or if, if I just got into it differently. Mm -hmm. Do you have a sense? Did, it, did you just, did it organize much more as it went on? Oh, okay. Uh, did it organize, probably organized a bit more musically as we went on. Um, what, what I felt uh, was that at one point, it became, it became more of a shared experience. Because by the end, you could have gone on forever, and I would have just fine with it. <laughs> um, it was wonderful. So we'll go ahead. I'll do next. Yeah. Uh, sorry. You had your hand raised. Yeah, thank you. Sorry. Um, I was just thinking about my my own experience of listening 
first to the to the noises of the uh, environment alone, and that sort of you know sometimes there's a randomness to the beeps, and um, just when you think maybe it's going to stop, it comes back again. And that's more more my experience just in the hospital, um, and but you've somehow found a rhythm to work with, and the use of the drone on the violin at the beginning for me was sort of holding those sounds and somehow allowing my imagination to engage so that uh, you know, I could close my eyes and sometimes the beat would sometimes you know, become a visual representation to me in my you know, experience of listening. So for me, it, it, kind of, uh, it offered an opportunity at certain moments to transform that experience of what those sounds could represent. Mm -hmm. And allowed me, I think, to engage with some creativity. How amazing is that when someone is, you know, um, is really trapped in their illness and in, in the ICU to have moments of creative, creative thought? Sure, exactly. Yeah, exactly. We, we brought up a couple of really interesting points. The first is that it, it, you just listen to the tape, there is no set rhythm. Just when you think the monitors are going to start playing a pulse or a beat or a rhythm, they don't. So one of the things that we try that we try and do, uh, which is not always successful, one thing we try and do is establish some sort of pulse and structure the noise on on the unit because we all love structure. Mm -hmm. Eric. Oh, uh, so I have a, a couple of questions and observations, but. Uh, to uh, respond to what uh, Dr. Wheeler said. Uh, yeah, it sounded at first that, that you guys were searching, and then you settled, and then once you settled, you know, there was a sense that anything could happen for as long as it wanted to, you know, which is great. Um, and, and then as a musician, um, I was curious uh, if you've experimented with this quite a bit, which I imagine you have. Um, have you experimented with different tempos and noticed the effect on the floor of how that would have a calming effect or whatever on the people working on the floor, and also with um, moving the tonic so that that constant tone that was going um, stopped being the root but maybe was used as the sure. fifth or something Absolutely. like that. Yeah, you know, um, And whether that gave you a little more freedom. You know. So I guess the questions are speeding up, slowing down, you know, how that affects people, you know, and, you know, and how, how you do with moving the tonic. Yeah. About one of the studies that we are currently doing right now, um, which is an analysis of a musical intervention in the ICU yeah. um, with three different focus patients, curricular, and staff. Um, that is going to be in the, in the PowerPoint. But there is a, a, another the pilot study, it's a small, a small study, and it's very meaningful for us. Um, and so, shame to first talk about studies with, with, with here with you. The thing is, is that we're playing to a recording, which is something we don't usually do. So, in in the 
actual ICUs, it's much more of, of an interactive process. So the thing you mentioned about uh, changing tempos and, and changing rhythms, we try and pick up as many different clues and cues as we can. Sometimes it could be just uh, somebody's gait. Medical staff walking down the hall might be walking at you a know, certain speed or whatever. And, uh, and we try and incorporate that into, into this. So we're trying to mirror what's going on. With this, that was kind of hard for me to in interact you know, with that sure. In the actual application of this, do you play in the individual rooms or do you play in the hall? And then also, do you always play together or do you play in the hall? No, as well? uh, this is probably the first time that Bernard and I have done this particular intervention together. Second time. We play, we speak, we speak. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, the names are in the environment of that we cannot be only affect the environment. Mm -hmm. This is not going to be fun. But that's true that EMT is a great source of referrals in the ICU because people get information about music therapy because they witness music therapy spread in the ICU. And after the session, we have every day, every day like, how can we get you here? This is very easy. This is part of the work. And we will really go back to your unit, we will follow you. And then we go to the field, we get the patient. And this is a whole world. Mm -hmm. They don't try to try a different environment. But EMT is just a matter of people. Just a matter of people. Yeah. Noise, noise in hospitals is something that's, that is a critical issue at this point. There are, there are many, many research studies being done on it. I have about 20 here. Last night, um, I just tried to see how many I could come up with. I had 75 studies. Something's being, not just in music therapy, but... Um, so this is, what we're doing is, we have not started um, a formal research project on this. There is an IRB study that's being written as we speak, uh, that hopefully next month uh, will kick off on, on uh, environmental music therapy, uh, radiation oncology, waiting room. But we're using a working hypothesis, and this is getting back to the subject at, at hand, which is pain and pain management. And the working hypothesis is that there's interactivity and the correlation between stress, emotion, and pain. Um, I think at this point it's pretty much common knowledge or uh, shared knowledge that there is always an emotional content to pain and that stress is a, exerts considerable influence on the way pain is perceived. We also know, and I think this is something we can all agree on, that music uh, can modulate and impact emotions, mood states, affect, and uh, that music can also modulate stress, reduce stress. So the idea is that if stress and emotion are related to pain, and music can affect stress and emotion, and music can indeed affect pain by working on these two, these two elements. So that's what we're working with. Uh, these are... Well, in case anyone uh, needs a description of what pain is. <laughs> An unpleasant sensory and emotional experience associated with actual potential tissue damage. So for me, the important, the important word in this definition is that it's very much indeed an emotional experience. Not That's really all the time is going to uh, allow us to address right now. We'd like to take a few minutes if you have any any questions about what you've seen, any of our ideas or comments. This is something that we use quite often. It's called an ocean disc. And So this is 
this isn't an analog white noise generator. <laughs> and um, one of the interesting things about this sound is that it, it uh, brings up lots of images to different people. It also depends on the way it's played. But that's reminiscent of breathing. All right, uh, perhaps uh, waves breaking on the shore. Um, this is more of a sound of the wind, sound of water, brook sounds. Um, two questions about how do you have you environmental music therapy sessions um, structured as a regularly scheduled component so staff know, for example, when you are going to show up, yeah. and when you do that, when you do those sessions, um, even though you are um, addressing the environment, your thinking is probably that you want to be able to be heard by maybe the broadest member of the unit population, so to speak. Yeah, the physical space is an mm -hmm. Do you do you to play physical? But these are protocols. We we sound really Yeah. Okay. With it. I think it's different. Um, pretty much every time, every time we do it, we might focus on in one end of the ICU, um, depending on uh, what what our perceptions are when we come onto the unit. What's the energy level? What's the energy like today on on this unit? Um, do people appear? more nervous than usual, uh, are people moving quicker, and that these are all things that, that might lead us to uh, concentrate on more towards one area of the ICU or out in front of the nursing station. Depends. I wouldn't say that there's a there's a set formula to how exactly how it's done. Uh, yeah, just on that last point, I was going to say, it probably really helps uh, the staff as well, you know, just in terms of coordinating the experience, if you're having music that could kind of, you know, help them to relax too, that that would assist them in perhaps being more human and social and agreeable with their with the patients. Um, but I want to say that uh, you know the the effect of this is for me it's 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 so clear that what you're doing by creating something in the environment sonic that has interest, that has curiosity, that has that leads the, the mind in a direction that's really, you know, beautiful in the sense of music. Uh, you know, you're taking out that element of the distraction and the noise, the, the way noise in effect, you know, can be distracting and even maybe a painful experience for people. So by enhancing the sound environment of the environment with something that's pleasant, it also has an organization to it as a music. It seems like you're really taking people's minds into, you know, a much more pleasant place. Which is going to have the whole sure. effect of, you know, bettering their, their experience and lowering the pain issue. Well, yeah, sure. The idea is that, is that uh, noise noise is a stressor that's going to exacerbate um, negative mood states mm -hmm. and and stress stress itself. Uh, so if if that's happening, the idea. Our hypothesis is that it's also going to exacerbate the perception of pain. So, if we're modulating the way that the noise is being perceived, then perhaps indirectly we're modulating the way pain is being perceived. Happy to answer any other questions afterwards outside. Thank you.